Judaism is undoubtedly an intrinsic part of our culture, and the chances are that, even if you don't personally know anyone Jewish, you will know something about their faith. Plays like The Merchant of Venice and Fiddler on the Roof prove that people of the Jewish faith have been part of popular culture just as much in the past as they are today. But how much do you really know about Jewish history? Keep watching as we count down six facts about Judaism. Number 6. The Jewish people comprise less than 1% of the world's population. Although Judaism is a widely recognized religion, in terms of followers, it barely scrapes into the top 10 faiths worldwide. In fact, today, more people believe in folk religions than Judaism, and practicing Jews only contribute around 0.2% of the world's population. Professor Sergio Della Pergola has estimated that if not for the Holocaust, there would be approximately 32 million Jews worldwide rather than the current figure, which stands at about 15 million. However, this still wouldn't even make up 1% of the world's population. For a religion with such a small following, Judaism definitely knows how to put itself on the map. Number 5. Judaism is the world's oldest monotheistic religion. Simply put, the Jews were the first people to believe in one God and deny the existence of any other gods. While there are other ancient religions that believe in one divine being, Hinduism being one that developed around the same time as Judaism, these other religions do not require other gods or divine beings to be denied. The origins of Judaism date back around 4,000 years, although the exact date can only be speculated about. It was an offshoot of Yahwism a polytheistic religion from Iron Age Israel, with Yahweh as the main god. The origin story of the Jewish faith centers around a Hebrew man called Abraham. God speaks to Abraham and tests his loyalty. On proving his devotion, Abraham is allowed to make a special covenant with God, who tells him that his descendants were chosen to create a great nation. Abraham's grandson, Jacob, changed his name to Israel, making his descendants the Israelites. These descendants included Moses and the people he freed from slavery in Egypt. Today, most archaeologists and scholars agree that the Exodus did not happen as described and may not have happened at all. Many argue that the Israelites were never in Egypt. The most widely accepted theory is that the Canaanites from modern-day Lebanon, southern Syria, Jordan, and the West Bank of Israel took on a new identity, calling themselves the Israelites. A possible explanation of the Exodus story comes from the probability that a number of Semites from Egypt joined them. While the exact origins of Judaism are unknown, sacred Jewish texts, known as the Hebrew Bible or Tanakh, were originally written around 1200 to 100 BCE. The books detail the origins of Judaism, the creation of the world, and the history and genealogy of the people of Israel. Number 4. Jewish people have always faced religious persecution. The Jewish people have faced persecution since the formation of the religion. Being one of the first monotheistic religions, the Hebrews, as they were then known, refused to worship any other gods or idols. Not only did they not recognize the local deities, but they also outright denied them, which was resented by other tribes and their rulers, leading to discrimination. During the reign of the Roman Empire, Jewish people were permitted to practice their religion, and the Jewish faith spread. This religious tolerance changed around 66 CE, when the people of Judea rose up in a rebellion against Roman rule. By 70 CE, the revolt had been crushed, and the sacred temple was destroyed, effectively destroying the Jewish state. Rome's relationship with Judaism changed again when the Roman emperors converted to Christianity. Many Jewish people refused to accept Jesus as the Messiah which was viewed as a threat to Christianity by Roman leaders, who were trying to establish it as the main religion of the empire. As Christianity spread, more discrimination was leveled against Jewish people. During the Middle Ages, numerous laws were passed that ostracized Jewish people further. In Northern Europe, strange myths about Jewish people started circulating, including that they had horns and tails. This prejudice was largely due to the fact that they were outsiders in an increasingly Christian world, it was probably a direct result of the Roman fear that Judaism was a threat to Christianity. Then, in 1095, Pope Urban II expressed his desire to free the Holy Land from Muslims. Christians across Europe, compelled by religious fervor, took up arms and headed for the Middle East. 
The Crusades are typically romanticized, but a lot of violence happened in the name of religion. Many Jewish communities were caught in the crossfire or targeted by Crusader armies. Later, in the 14th century, Jewish people were accused of spreading the bubonic plague. No one knew what was causing the plague, so panic and fear set in. Due to old superstitions and myths, Jewish people were a convenient scapegoat when looking for the cause of the epidemic. They were accused of poisoning wells and knowingly spreading the disease. Later, during the Reformation, Jews were targeted once again. At first, Martin Luther defended those of the Jewish faith, but this was only because he mistakenly believed that Jewish people were shunning Christianity because of misconduct in the church. He thought that once changes were made to how the religion was practiced, Jewish people would accept Jesus as the Messiah and convert. When they didn't, Luther wrote a pamphlet entitled On the Jews and Their Lies. This 1545 document was reprinted in the 1930s as fuel for Nazi propaganda. Number 3. Judaism has always been divided into different factions. Judaism has never been one unified religion, and distinct factions have existed since its inception. You can find many different sects throughout Jewish history, but in the first century CE, the main groups were the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Essenes. Each group held their beliefs as the correct interpretation of the religious texts and looked down on the other groups. The Pharisees had formed after the Maccabean Revolt, in which a group of Jewish rebel warriors took control of Judea from the Greek Seleucid Empire. It is believed that the Pharisees were descended from an older Jewish sect called the Hasideans. The Sadducees were a sect consisting of high priests, aristocratic families, and wealthy merchants. Unlike the Pharisees, who revered piety and learning, the Sadducees felt that birth, wealth, and social position held authority. This group also tended to have better relations with the Greek and Roman rulers. The Sadducees were in constant conflict with the Pharisees over how to practice Judaism, the main issue being that the Sadducees only revered what was written in the Torah. This practice differed from the Pharisees, who included the oral law in their traditions. The Essenes were considered the most diverse group due to the difference in historical accounts. For the most part, they excluded women. But all historical accounts agree that they lived in monastic communities in which property was held in common. Officials regulated their lives, and their beliefs most aligned with the Pharisees, except they shunned public life and lived in seclusion. By 70 CE, both the Sadducees and the Essenes were gone. However, the Essene Library would survive and be discovered in 1947, and these writings are now known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. Today, like most religions, Judaism is practiced differently by different groups. These differences are largely based on geography, but there are four main streams with which most Jewish people identify. These are Orthodox, Reform, Conservative, and Reconstructionist, with Orthodox being considered the most traditional. Number 2. The Old Testament is based on the Hebrew Bible Of course, another Jewish splinter group is the Christians, and the Hebrew Bible is the basis for what became the Old Testament. An Anatolian bishop, Melito of Sardis, first coined the name the Old Testament, which was given to an extended version of the Hebrew Bible that was adopted and adapted around the 1st century CE. The Roman Catholic version contains 46 books, compared to the 24 of the Hebrew Bible, while the Protestant version has 39 in its Old Testament. Some of the extra texts were compiled when Jewish scholars produced a Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible called the Septuagint. Around 90 CE, the additional text was identified by the non-Hellenistic Jewish scholarship at the Council of Jamnia. It was separated from the main text and labeled as Seraphim Hizanim, meaning extraneous books. When St. Jerome used the Septuagint as the basis for his Latin translation of the Old Testament, he added the extra books despite being dubious about their authenticity. He dubbed the text Apocrypha, meaning non-canonical, but was made to include them in the Vulgate Bible. The Vulgate was then copied and edited over the years, with an edition produced in Paris in the 13th century that served as a base for the earliest printed editions. The Roman Catholics also added other apocryphal writings, which is why their Old Testament has the most books. The order of the books also differs between the Hebrew Bible and both the Catholic and Protestant Old Testaments. Number 1. 
Judaism influenced Islam and Christianity. Yes, the world's three main monotheistic religions are all based on the Hebrew Bible. These religions are known as the Abrahamic religions, as they all recognized Abraham as their first prophet. However, disagreements about subsequent prophets divide them. The Christians believe that Jesus was a prophet of the Lord and an extension of God. The Jews disagreed, as Jesus did not fall in line with the Messianic prophecies of Isaiah and Ezekiel. The Islamic faith split off when another prophet came onto the scene around 570 CE. This prophet is known as Muhammad. The majority of the Jewish people refused to believe that Muhammad was a prophet, instead labeling him as a madman. Rather than being prophets, the Jewish people felt that both Jesus and Muhammad were paving the way for the true Messiah who would lead the Jews to their rightful place as God's chosen people. In the Mishnah Torah, Maimonides states, All the words of Jesus of Nazareth and this Ishmaelite, Muhammad, who arose after him are only to make straight the path of the Messianic king and to prepare the world to serve the Lord together. Another significant difference between these three religions is their view of monotheism, with Christianity being the odd one out. Many Christians believe there is one God that is divided or represented by three beings, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Muslims believe that there is only one being who can be called God, or Allah, and that both Jesus and Muhammad were prophets of the Lord, serving as his mouthpiece. Like Islam, Judaism is also strictly monotheistic in that they believe that one distinct being is God, also known as Yahweh. However, Judaism largely rejects the idea that both Jesus and Muhammad received the Word of God. These differences have led to many clashes over the years and caused some to assume that the basis for most wars is religion. However, historically, that is not true. What is true is that religion is used as a divisive tool to both justify and promote conflict. Do you know any fascinating facts about Judaism that we didn't include in our list? Let us know in the comments below. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about Judaism, check out our book, History of the Jews, a captivating guide to Jewish history, starting from the ancient Israelites through the Roman rule to World War II. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.